Welcome to the CES Letter, A Closer Look. This video presentation is working from the March 31, 2015 edition of the CES Letter. On pages 15 through 17, the CES Letter compares the Book of Mormon to two books published early in the 19th century. The first book of Napoleon, printed in 1809, and The Late War, published a decade later. Both were in circulation in the United States prior to the coming forth of the Book of Mormon, and according to the CES letter, both books influenced the construction of the Book of Mormon. The CES letter declares that, concerning the late war, the first chapter alone is stunning, as it reads incredibly like the Book of Mormon. So we are here to discover if this is true. Arranged in chapters and verses, the first page reads... Now it came to pass in the 1812th year of the Christian era and in the 36th and sixth year after the people of the provinces of Columbia had declared themselves a free and independent nation that in the sixth month of the same year on the first day of the month the chief governor whom the people had chosen to rule over the land of Columbia even James whose surname was Madison delivered a written paper to the great Sanhedrin of the people who were assembled together. And the name of the city where the people were gathered together was called after the name of the chief captain of the land of Columbia, whose fame extended to the uttermost parts of the earth, albeit he had slept with his fathers. It is true that stylistic similarities can be identified in the text. However, the CES letter does not stop there. It reports... The staggering parallels and similarities to the Book of Mormon are astounding. It also asserts that the late war is devastating to the Book of Mormon and its claims. The devastation is apparently due to alleged parallelisms between the Book of Mormon and the late war. The Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines a parallel as something that is very similar and often happening at the same time. Some observers call this type of criticism of the Book of Mormon parallelomania. The CES letter provides an internet link to a website with many reported parallels between the late war and the Book of Mormon. It also prints a bullet list of 26 parallels that are evidently the most extraordinary. The list seems impressive until we look more closely. Some of the parallels do not seem that significant. For example, a rod of iron is one of the 26, but when we compare its usage in the late war to that of the Book of Mormon, we discover some significant differences. The late war recounts, Then will we rule them with a rod of iron, and they shall be unto us hewers of wood and drawers of water. In contrast, the Book of Mormon defines the rod of iron as the word of God. The rod of iron refers to a totally different object in the Book of Mormon when compared to the late war. This observation supports that claims of parallelism in the CES letter should probably be verified before believed. Of greater significance is the observation that the CES letter does not account for important non-parallelisms between the two books. If we simply compare some of the most commonly used words in each volume, we discover remarkable dissimilarities. For example, words like baptism, priesthood, Holy Ghost, and church are used dozens or even hundreds of times in the Book of Mormon, but are entirely absent from the late war. It is also obvious from this study that themes like judgment and salvation that are important in the Book of Mormon are missing from the late war. If we reverse the search, we discover many words that are common in the late war, but are seldom or never used in the Book of Mormon, including the word capture, which is found 262 times in the late war, but is absent from the Book of Mormon. The undeniable dissimilarities and non-parallelisms create additional questions regarding claims of parallelism between the Book of Mormon and the late war. But what about the first book of Napoleon? It too uses a similar word style to the Book of Mormon. 
Chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 read, And behold, it came to pass in these latter days that an evil spirit arose on the face of the earth and greatly troubled the sons of men. And this spirit seized upon and spread amongst the people who dwell in the land of Gaul. The author of the CES letter writes, When I first read this, along with other passages from the first book of Napoleon, I was floored. Here we have two early 19th century contemporary books written at least a decade before the Book of Mormon that not only read and sound like the Book of Mormon, but which also carry so many of its parallels and themes as well. So the claim is again parallelism. To further support this allegation, the CES letter presents a side-by-side -side comparison of text from both books. The following are a side-by-side -side comparison of the beginning of the first book of Napoleon with the beginning of the Book of Mormon. The first book of Napoleon, quote, Condemn not the writing, an account. The first book of Napoleon, upon the face of the earth, it came to pass, the land, their inheritances, their gold and silver, and the commandments of the Lord, the foolish imaginations of their hearts, small in stature, Jerusalem, because of the perverse wickedness of the people. End of quote. From the Book of Mormon, quote, Condemn not the writing, an account, the first book of Nephi, upon the face of the earth, it came to pass, the land, his inheritance and his gold and his silver and the commandments of the Lord, the foolish imaginations of his heart, large in stature, Jerusalem, because of the wickedness of the people. End of quote. These two paragraphs do appear to be similar. But what about all the dots, the ellipses, which indicate words have been left out? If we thumb through Napoleon's first book, we discover that the paragraph available in the CES letter is really a collection of excerpts of one or more words taken from the first 25 pages of the book. Hundreds of words have been left out, and some of the words chosen are not impressive, like it came to pass. We also realize it is not an actual paragraph or anything close to it. Sometimes multiple pages are skipped, and single words like land and Jerusalem do not seem to be too significant. Similarly, the words included from the Book of Mormon are taken from multiple pages. This side-by-side -side comparison really just compares the words the author of the CES letter chose to include. This type of text manipulation is not scholarly or even significant. It creates an illusion of similarity that does not actually exist. It might be considered to be deceptive. Just like the late war, non-parallelisms between the first book of Napoleon and the Book of Mormon are numerous. This chart shows multiple discrepancies. Do parallelisms prove causation? No, they do not. This graph shows that the divorce rate in Maine and the per capita consumption of margarine in the United States between 2000 and 2009 correlate at 99%. Yet, the two measured observations have no association or connection with each other. Using the same computer techniques adopted by the CES letter to show their parallels between the Book of Mormon and these books, LDS scholar Jeff Lindsay has shown that Walt Whitman's book, Leaves of Grass, offers parallels far richer than those alleged in the CES letter. The problem is that Whitman's book was published in 1855, 25 years after the Book of Mormon. A more plausible explanation for the similarities is simply that the late war in the first book of Napoleon use the language of the King James Version of the Bible to tell their stories. The authors of these two books purposefully attempted to emulate the Old English of that version of the Bible, which is in the same style as the Book of Mormon. 
One important implication advanced by critics through this type of data analysis is the idea that if the authors of the first book of Napoleon and the late war could write a secular book that is similar to the Book of Mormon, then Joseph Smith could have authored the Book of Mormon without any divine assistance. If we compare the three authors, however, we can identify important differences. First, the other two authors were older, one already a published author, and both with college educations. Compare this to Joseph Smith's less than one year of frontier schooling. More impressive, however, is comparing the size of the three books. The CES letter alleges parallelism, but the late war is less than a third the size of the Book of Mormon. If Joseph Smith were to have carried parallelism to an extreme, even plagiarizing every word of the late war, he still would have needed to create the equivalent of two more similarly sized books without assistance. Since the first book of Napoleon is less than a tenth the size of the Book of Mormon, Joseph would have needed to create over nine times the amount of material. An important detail not disclosed in the CES letter is that to find these two books with so many alleged parallels to the Book of Mormon, researcher Chris Johnson had to look through over 130,000 books, which he accomplished with the help of computers and complicated algorithms. Unfortunately, he did not check for non-parallel. Critics will continue to attempt to explain away the Book of Mormon with novel theories. However, to date, none of their explanations seems to have any validity. For 179 years, this book has been examined and attacked, denied and deconstructed, targeted and torn apart, like perhaps no other book in modern religious history, perhaps like no other book in any religious history. And still it stands. Failed theories about its origins have been born, parroted, and died.